watching FinTech Wave. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ken from FinTech Wave. I hope you're well. I'm back with another video. And uh, before we get started, I'd just like to remind you, if you haven't already, please hit like and subscribe and also hit that notification bell. Those things help FinTech Wave go up in the rankings and you'll also be notified when we drop new content on FinTech Wave. This video is a follow-up to the video I did last week on Quant and Bifrost. And uh, I just want to check in with our one-week performance. But before I get into that, I just want to have a look at the market overall. Right now, the total crypto market cap is $2.3 trillion. So we're back on the upswing, headed to $3 trillion. Uh, Bitcoin is back over $50,000 comfortably at $51,755. Ethereum is $39 plus. I like what I'm hearing about Bitcoin from a couple of the uh, top analysts in the space. Raul Powell, who's an ex-Goldman Sachs guy and big Bitcoin investor, he's thinking $200,000 or $300,000. He thinks, uh, I think he said recently, $100,000 for a Bitcoin would be a disappointment. And also... With what's happening with Ethereum and DeFi, when the reality kicks in from what's going on with DeFi, Ethereum's headed to at least 10,000, if you ask me. Uh, there are people in the space who think it could go even higher, as high as 20,000. So I think Ethereum is even a safe bet. Another thing you might want to look at is there is an underlying stock that's based entirely on Ethereum, E-T-H-E, Grayscale Ethereum Trust. Look into that if uh, you want to try to get into Ethereum at a more reasonable price. It's a way to be exposed to Ethereum without having to take the whole plunge and get the crypto itself. And Grayscale also has Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which again, provides you exposure to the crypto without having to buy the cryptocurrency itself. Those securities can be obtained through most brokers, Vanguard, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, Schwab, any one of those you can find GBTC, which is Grayscale Bitcoin Trust or ETHE, which is Grayscale Ethereum Trust. Again, not a bad way to get exposure to top level cryptos without necessarily having to open an account with an exchange and go through all the KYC and all of that. You know, it just might be something that you'd rather not do. And if you already have a brokerage account, these securities are available to you. So something that you might want to investigate further. As you know, nothing I say on this channel should be construed as financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This channel is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. Moving down the line to today's main topic of discussion, I'm going to talk about the two cryptos that I talked about last week. They were Quant and Bifrost. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around this week. I'm going to talk about Bifrost first. So how do we do? All right. Well, Bifrost is now 31 cents. When I was talking about it last week, it was about 42 cents. So let's say down 10 cents, down 25%. But look, you know, you got to realize the run up in Bifrost came from four cents all the way up to 60, 70 cents. So there were a lot of people that probably took profits. That's what I would have done at 70 cents, taking some of those profits and put them in other securities. When you get a 15x, 16x, 17x gain on a crypto, you know, we all learn the hard way that it's probably a good idea to take some of those profits off the table because how many times have you done that? gotten a big 10x gain, said, yeah, I hope it goes to 20x and boom, it turns around and drops back down. And now you only made three, four X because you missed the cash out. So a lot of people probably cashed out and uh, went into other cryptos. But I'll tell you this, Bifrost, their main thing is they're going to be the wallet that people use to interface with Flare Networks. Flare Networks hasn't dropped yet. So people probably think they have time to get back into it. There was a lot of profit taking. Also, you know, XRP doesn't have clarity yet. The case is not resolved yet. Flare Networks is based largely on the functionality of XRP. So people might be like, well, Bifrost is still going to be in limbo as long as Flare Networks is in limbo, as long as XRP is in limbo. So I have time to get back in, right? There are people with that kind of money that be like, yeah, I can always get back to this later. You know, as long as I pick it up under a buck, I'm good because this is where I'm getting at. Bifrost is probably going to go to two, three dollars, I think. You know what I mean? It's like if it hits 70 cents before Flare even dropped, I mean, I don't think it's unreasonable that this thing could go to $253 within a year's time. Again, I still think it's a buying opportunity here. It could go down more. It could go down to 20 cents. It could go down to a nickel. You know, think of it long term. Don't expect to get into a coin like Bifrost and be profitable in two days. Not likely to happen. Flare Networks has to launch and it has to get up and running and show some functionality. There's a lot of airdrops coming. There's a Spark token coming. There's a Songbird token coming. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot coming down the pipe with this whole 
Flare Network's platform, of which Bifrost is going to be one of the main ways people interface with it. There's also Decent Wallet, but Bifrost seems to be the one that they're talking up the most. I want to make a couple of clarifications also. I said that Bifrost should be a browser extension. That's the information I got. I'm looking. I don't see it available as a browser extension, which is neither here nor there right now because, again, Flare hasn't launched. Whether or not they make it a browser extension that you can easily add to Chrome or Firefox or Safari remains to be seen. But again, we won't know until Flare drops and we see the functionality in real time. So really, it's speculation. If you get into Bifrost, you're speculating. Please realize that. I covered it in the last video, and I'm going to say again, you might want to look at this token. You know, I got in and I'm down. I got in at 42 cents. I'm down. 10%, but I'm waiting to see if it goes down to 27, I'm gonna buy more. It was down as low as 30, and I might only be up to 31 because of the recent run-up in Bitcoin. If Bitcoin runs to 55, this thing is gonna take off again. So I'm watching it right now. I mean, you can pick up another thousand buy for us for 312 bucks. Oh, by the way, if you have comments, please share them in the comments below. Uh, I welcome all of that feedback. Listen, if you wanna know how to pick up buy for us, the easiest way is to have a MetaMask wallet, Put some Ethereum in your MetaMask wallet and swap it right in MetaMask for the Bifrost. You can go on Uniswap and swap it, but I mean, how much are you going to save? Five bucks, six bucks? Sometimes you don't save anything. I've done the Uniswap thing, and I think that, you know, just for ease of use, you can swap right in MetaMask. But be careful when you add Bifrost to MetaMask. The best way to do it is you see right here, add to MetaMask. That's how you do it. This isn't really a MetaMask tutorial. There are plenty of tutorials on that. All I'm saying is there are some wise guys out there that like to go on the Ethereum blockchain and make dummy tokens that kind of resemble other tokens. And if you're not careful, even when you go on Uniswap and other platforms, they tell you, are you sure that this is the token you want to add? Because if you add the wrong token, it's not that it's likely or anything like that, but it is a possibility that People have been burned where they go thinking there, just because you think you typed in BFC, double check and triple check and make sure you're adding the right token and you're swapping to the right token. Because once you have that thousand dollars worth of Ethereum and you type in BFC and you don't realize that sometimes this thing populates automatically and what comes back is BFCH or something like that, just off the top of my head. And that's not Bifrost. That's something else. That could be some other token or could be some dummy token that somebody set up just to catch people right? And then you don't really pay 100% attention to what you're doing and you inadvertently swap for some BFC something else like BFCT or BFCK or something like that. That Ethereum's gone. You just bought a token that is not Bifrost. It's some other token. Maybe if you're lucky, the thing will take off. Maybe it's some other altcoin that is, you know, going to pop off someday. But generally speaking, you could have just got scammed. So there's always that danger. This is crypto. In a lot of ways, it can be like the Wild West. Just be careful, all right? Bifrost is something you might want to look at. I'm long Bifrost. I'm bullish on Bifrost because of their affiliation with Flare and what Flare is poised to do and the fact that Flare is backed in a big way by Ripple. Those are all factors to me that make me say, you know what? They're down with Flare. How can you go wrong? You know, so that's my rationale behind it. Again, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. So far, we're down 25% from last week. So you buy more. That's my sentiment about it. All right. Good luck to you and whatever you decide. I think the buy for us is something you might want to look at. Moving on to the next token, I have Quant. Quant just did outstandingly well. It was 195 when I had it up on the board last week in the video. I actually was able to get in lower than that. I had talked about getting in at 80, but what happened was I had sold out of that position at 80 because that was a month and a half ago and the thing wasn't moving like it moved now. This is the way I'm accustomed to seeing this token move. Like it was 195, now it's 358. When I woke up this morning, it was 362. So it had almost doubled in a week, okay? Almost 100% return in a week. And this is Labor Day weekend. It's gonna be a long weekend. The selling may not have even kicked in entirely yet. The good news is a lot of times in finance, you know, the summer is a slow time because a lot of the big players, they take their full summer vacation in the Hamptons and things kind of go on a bit of a lull. And in some of the uptick we've seen in Bitcoin, which is largely a determinant of what happens in the market overall, could be the fact that these guys are starting to come back from their summer vacations. Some guys come back early. 
You know, not everybody waits until the end of Labor Day to get back in the game. Some guys is like, well, I've been on vacation for five weeks. I'm coming back, taking the helicopter in from the Hamptons and getting to jump on things early in the game. What they do in the investment banking space, especially since commercial banks and investment banks are getting more and more into crypto, can begin to have bearings on what happens with the main cryptocurrency, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum, since a lot of staking is going on with Ethereum. And then those bullish activities and those price increases start to trickle down to other alts. Quant is set to do really well anyway because of what they're about. So either way, I mean, for the whole week, I mean, a lot of times Bitcoin was kind of down from 50,000, going to 49, 48, even 47 and change at one point. And I was watching Quant and Quant was bucking that trend all week, all week. I think for a little while it stayed around 182, but then it took off and started hitting the like high 180s, like 188 and what have you. When I went to sleep last night, I think it was like 189. I don't think it had hit 190 yet. It might've popped up to 195 yesterday early. But then it went back down to like 182, 183, something like that. But it was bucking the trend. Like some of the steam was coming out of Bitcoin and Quant was bucking that trend all week long. As I said, it was 362 when I woke up. So I'm expecting 400 by the end of the week. This token, I've seen it go from 80 to like 195 in a few days. When this thing decides to take off, it just goes. So, you know, you have to figure out where, if you're in quant, you have to figure out where, do you want to cash out? Do you want to try to play that day trading game and cash out profits and wait and see if it's going to come back down? That's up to you. I'm not giving you strategy here, really. The only strategy I'm giving you is if you get in something and you believe in it and it goes down a little bit from your entry point, you might want to consider dollar cost averaging, right? Quant, has been on the move since really, if you look at the three month activity on Quant, in three months, it's come up from 40 bucks to 300 some odd bucks. So you're talking nine X in three months. So you have to decide, do you want to take profits? I don't know where you got in at. Um, I was talking about it here last week, just last week, it was here. That vertical run on the right is what has happened in the last week with this token. Let's look at the seven day and you can see it even closer. That's what's going on with Quant right now. And if you ask me, that's a seven day chart. I think if you were to zoom out of that chart, it's like this. That's just seven days. That's a big run. Some people might want to take profits. But one of the main points I want to make in this video, and then I'm going to wrap it up, is this. Guys, you got to remember, we're at the beginning of something enormous. Think about when the internet first started 25 years ago, whatever it was. You know, it went so much further from there. We haven't even gotten started. We haven't even gotten regulatory clarity in the United States yet. XRP hasn't even gotten underway. Flare Networks hasn't even really launched yet. And we're seeing this kind of activity on some of these tokens. Could it come down to 125? Sure, right? So if you're just looking to get into quant now, which is saying it's 355, if you're just looking to get into this token now and you got even a thousand bucks, I would say don't drop the whole thousand bucks and FOMO in now. You know what I mean? Be prepared for some profit taking because that's a pretty steep run up in a really short time. And uh, people could cash out. It could go to 500. I don't know. I know that Quant wants to basically unify the Latin American currency. And uh, nobody else is talking about doing that. Latin America and the power of that amount of people is nothing to discount. And I think it's brilliant of this company to focus on that as a target play. As soon as I got that piece of information, I dove in. I dove in once at 80 and it didn't really move right away. I was impatient and I got out at like $86. I made like six bucks. I made enough money to cover the fees. The fees weren't that bad like they are right now. And I regretted it. And I saw it go to $182 and I was like, holy smoke. And I jumped back in and I don't think I'm letting it go. I'm not one of those people that's going to cash out a quant because that's short sighted. You know, they haven't even gotten started on doing what they're trying to do. So I'm trying to remind myself, think two years down the line. If it doubled in a week, imagine what quant could be two years down the line. And that's kind of where I want to go with wrapping up my evaluation of this crypto is that I think quant is headed for a G easily before year's end. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see if I'm wrong. All right. So buy frost still, you know, down 25%, but look at it as a buying opportunity. We're talking about it went from 40 cents to 30 cents. Okay. I think buy frost when flare drops is headed to at least a dollar fifty two dollars. So you might just like if you're down 25% because you got in last week, just forget about it for a little while. Hold on to it if you can. 
unless you need that money for something else. Right now, you don't want to jump around on Ethereum too much because the fees are really expensive. Uh, before you go doing swaps and things like that on Ethereum, make sure you're looking at that gas price because you could get hit in the head if you don't know what you're doing. You could pay like $112 a gas fee for something that you could get for 38 40 bucks if you wait a little bit. That's the one problem with Ethereum. Sometimes you can't be spontaneous because the gas fees can be really, really outrageous. So that's about it. Bifrost, I'm still long on and I'm still bullish on. And Quant, I'm really blown away by how it's performed in just a short week. I didn't really expect this. It was 195. I thought maybe 220, 225, but I think it's headed to 400 by the end of this week. When the holiday passes and these guys get back, not only is it a holiday weekend it's going to end, but Labor Day weekend is ending. It's the summertime that's ending. The summer season is ending. A lot of financial activity that usually lulls out in the summertime is going to start to pick up steam again. We're getting ready to go into Q4, and I would expect to see a lot of activity in crypto going toward Christmas. Remember, there are people out there who are predicting a six-figure Bitcoin. Some are saying 100,000. Some are saying 200 and 300,000 before years out. Do your own research. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm just making crypto videos to spread the word. I'm interested in the space. These are for information and entertainment purposes only. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you on the next one. This is Ken from Fintech Wave. Thanks for checking out this latest episode. If you like the content, please hit like and subscribe. Shout out to all the people who've subscribed already. I'm going to try to keep the quality content coming on Fintech. I appreciate you. And there's a link in the description. The Fintech Wave theme is now an NFT. See you next time, everybody. Take care.